Hi, how are you doing today? Hope you're doing well. My name is Marco Rojas, aka Marco Polo, and I'm the Community Program Manager here at the Annapolis Maritime Museum and Park. And today I have a very special video for you. I will be dissecting the friendly neighborhood Eastern Oyster, okay? Now remember, safety always comes first, so you'll need a few things. First, you'll need your shucking glove. You'll need your shucking knife. You will need, which I like to have a rag or a towel, okay? And of course you'll need your oyster, okay? Very important. So we have all the things we need. Now before I actually dissect the oyster, I'd like to say a few fun facts about this oyster, okay? Oysters are referred to as bivalves. And the word bi means two, just like bicycle, okay? Two tires. So bivalve just means two shells. You have a top shell and a bottom shell, okay? It's a bivalve. Now, oysters grow uh, an inch a year, okay? So, in order to harvest an oyster, it has to be three years old, so three inches, all right? Another fun fact, which a lot of people do know, and it's very important, that oysters are filter feeders, okay? They can filter about 30 to 50 gallons a day, which is pretty amazing. It has a lot of water. So, that's a quick fun fact for you. Now, let's get into our dissection. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for. So I went ahead and shucked the oyster so we can see the inside of it. So here's the hinge. And a lot of people say, you know, the oyster is not very complex. There's not much to an oyster because it doesn't look like much. But the oyster is actually more complex as you would imagine. So right here is this thin layer called the mantle, which is, like I said before, a thin layer that covers the internal anatomy of the oyster. And the oyster has these small little hairs, or tentacles rather, that are called cilia. And the cilia actually can um, stick out and actually retract back and forth. So when they actually stick out, these little tentacles will move back and forth rapidly, actually creating a small current, which we know oysters are filter feeders. So what do oysters eat? They eat algae, which is phytoplankton. So these little hairs move back and forth, causing a current and bringing all these food particles. But also, along with the food particles, it will bring in the dirt, okay? The dirt that's in the water. Which explains, you see how this is really brown? Let me closer for you. That's because of the dirt, right? So it transports the food particles and actually takes it through the gills. Because the gills have two functions. One, for the function, it allows the oyster to breathe, just as fish have gills, oysters have gills. It also transports the food particles from the gills into the mouth. The mouth is right here. Look at that, right in there. So that is the mouth. It's through here, right into the mouth, and from the mouth, it goes into the stomach. So the oyster eats algae, which is phytoplankton. And we know what comes in must come out. So yes, oysters do poop. And it, they poop through the rectum, okay? It comes out of the rectum, right in there. So you're probably wondering, so Marco, you also said that dirt, you know, goes into the oyster. So does the oyster eat dirt? And the answer is no, the oyster does not eat dirt, okay? It receives no nutrition, uh, or nutritional value from the dirt. So what happens is the oyster mixes the dirt in this thick mucus and it spits it out, okay? It spits it out. And that is called pseudo-feces, okay? Which means fake poop, because we know oysters actually do poop. So that's pseudo-feces, fake poop. So we have the stomach here, and then in between the stomach and the ductal muscle lies the heart. And the oyster has a small heart. It's kind of hard to see, but the heart is right in here. Sometimes if you shuck a fresh oyster, you can see the heart still beating, which is pretty interesting. And so like I said before, this right here is the adductor muscle. It's very tender, and it's the muscle. And that allows the oyster to close its shell very tight. So when you shuck an oyster, you have to slice the adductor muscle because they are attached. So you have to slice it. So this is the top part of the adductor muscle. So let's talk about it again. So we have the cilia, the little tentacles. We have the gills, which oysters have four gills, okay? And from the gills, we have the mouth, 
stomach, the rectum, the heart, and last but not least, the adductor muscle. So I hope this was very educational and interesting. I always find it very interesting. So what I'll do is I'll actually attach a small resource, which is like a worksheet that basically explains the differences between the oyster anatomy, the fish anatomy, and the human anatomy. And I would want you to work on that. I think it would be very uh, fun and educational as well. So I'll go ahead and attach that. But thank you so much for viewing. And I hope you learned something new. Have a great day. Bye.